Throughout this video, we're looking at algebra fractions and how to add and subtract them. We're going to look at four examples. First of all, in example one, we're going to look at a basic example of how to actually add and subtract fractions. Then in example two, three and four, we're getting into algebraic fractions. Notice in example four, the algebra is on the denominator, the bottom of the fraction. So they're ranging in difficulty here from example one up to example four. So let's have a look at example one and two, first of all. So in order to add fractions, we first of all need to get a number on the denominator that's common. The denominator is the number that's on the bottom of the fraction. Now your common denominator is quite easy to find. All you have to do basically is multiply the two denominators by each other, the three and the five. So my common denominator, so I'm going to call it CD for future, is going to be 15. I'm multiplying the three by the five. Now it doesn't have to be the lowest common denominator. It could be 15, it could be 30, it could be 45. It's up to you. So just multiply the bottom, the numbers by each other and that'll get you your common denominator. Next thing now I do is I write down my two fractions again. So I'm going to put down my fraction two over three plus my three over five. And now I'm going to just think to myself, how do I make this 15? from the tree, or in other words, how many trees are in 15? So I divide three into 15, I get five. So I'm just gonna put a little multiply by five then on my first fraction. So I'm making my denominator timesing it by five. I also have to multiply the numerator by five, the top of the fraction, because if you do something to the bottom, you also have to do it to the top to make it equivalent. And when I multiply that out, I'm gonna get five by two is 10 and five multiplied by three on the bottom gets me 15. So I've now changed two thirds into 10 over 15. They're known as equivalent fractions. I'm now gonna come over to my second fraction, the three over five, and I'm gonna do the same steps again. I'm gonna find out how do I make this five now become a 15. And in order to make it become a 15, I divide the five into 15 and I get three. So that means I need to multiply my second fraction by a tree and you have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the tree. So when I do that, I now have plus uh, three by three, which is nine and three by five is 15. And when I add them to add fractions, you only have to add the numerators. You don't add the denominators. So think about like a third of a pizza plus another third of a pizza that gives you two thirds of a pizza. So you only add the tops. So 10 plus nine is 19. So 19 over 15, which is the same as one and four over 15 as a mixed fraction. So how many 15s are in 19? There's one with remainder four. So that's example one. We're now gonna come over and look at example two here, just bringing in a little bit of algebra and changing our sign now to a negative. So it's two X over three minus four X over 10. Same steps apply. We find our common denominator first of all. So my common denominator here is going to be three multiplied by 10, which is 30. So that's my common denominator. I then write down my two fractions again. Uh, I'm just gonna do it slightly different this time instead of, uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean now. So two X over three minus four X over 10. And rather than putting the little multiply outside of the fraction, I'm gonna incorporate it into the fraction. So it's up to you which method you prefer from example one or example two. So I go to my common denominator and I see how many times the three divided into the 30 and it divides in 10 times. So that means I'm gonna multiply the fraction on the left, two X over three by 10 on the top and bottom. So as I said, I'm just gonna show you a different way of doing it. So you could put that in a bracket and put a 10 outside of it. And then on the top, it's two X multiplied by 10. So again, that's just slightly different to just putting the little multiply by 10 outside it. And when I multiply that fraction, I get 10 by 2x and I get 20x over the 10 by 3, which is 30. I'm now coming to the 4x over 10. So it's a subtraction here. And I now come back up to my common denominator and I figure out how many times this 10 divides into the 30 and it divides in three times. So I'm gonna put a little bracket around the 4x and a bracket around the 10 and I'm multiplying both of them by a three. Now it doesn't matter if you put the three in front of the four X or to the back, it's still commutative, you're still multiplying. 
Okay, so what happens when I multiply out that? So it's 3 by 4x, which is 12x, and 3 by 10, which is 30. And when I subtract those fractions, once again, you only have to worry about the top lines. So what your sum is, it's basically 20x minus 12x. So 20 minus 12 gives me 8x over 30. You could go a little bit further. You could see that I can simplify that fraction. I can divide the top and the bottom of that fraction by a 2. So I'm just going to put a little note here that I'm dividing the top by 2 and the bottom by 2. Because remember, if you do something to the top, you must do it to the bottom. And when I divide 4x, uh, sorry, 2 into 8x, I get 4x. And when I divide 2 into 30, I get 15. So it's the same as 4x over 15. And that's example 1 and 2. So let's have a look now at example 3 and 4. So in example 3, same steps apply. We need to get our common denominator. Common denominator is a common number on the bottom of the fraction. So I'm going to multiply the 3 by the 2 to get my common denominator, which is giving me 6. So I'm going to write down CD, standing for common denominator, of 6. Okay, that's my first step. I'm then going to write down my two fractions, and it is 2x plus 1 over 3, and it is plus x plus 4 over 2. There are my two fractions. I then figure out how many times this 3 divides into the 6. It divides in 2 times, so that means I need to multiply my first fraction by 2. So what I'm going to do here is, again, I'm just going to put the bottom and top in a bracket, and I'm going to multiply them both by a 2. So I'm putting a 2 outside the bracket to denote multiplication. Now again, if you want, just to be clear, you can write it like this. If you want, you can put that little um, multiply by 2 and the little multiply by 2, if that's what you prefer. But I'm going to stick them to the bracket. Okay? And be careful here. You're multiplying in the full 2. So you're multiplying the 2 into the 2x and the 2 into the 1. So the 2 by the 2x is getting me 4x, and the 2 multiplied by the plus 1 is giving me a plus 2. And that is all over uh, 2 multiplied by 3, which is 6. So what that is telling me is 2x plus 1 is equivalent to 4x plus 2 over 6. Let's come now to our second fraction. So my second fraction is over 2, so I have to figure out how do I make this 2 become a 6. Well, I multiplied it by 3. So I'm coming down to my second fraction. I'm putting the numerator and the denominator into a bracket. And I'm multiplying both of them now by a 3. So I'm putting a 3 in front of the bracket to denote multiplication. I'm going to put my plus sign in between my two fractions. And now I'm just drawing my arrows in to denote multiplication. So 3 by x is giving me 3x. And 3 by 4 is giving me 12. So 3x plus 12 as my numerator. And as my denominator on the bottom, it's 3 by 2, which is giving me a 6. Okay, hopefully everyone's happy to dare. Next thing I do now is I have to add my fraction. So again, remember the denominator stays the same. It's over 6. And I now combine the tops. So it's going to be 4x plus 2. And now I'm putting in this plus here. That's going to go in here. So I'm putting in my plus and it's plus my 3x plus 12. So I'm making this a single fraction, basically. That's what I'm doing here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to group common terms. So I'm going to put the 4x and the 3x together, and that's going to make 7x. So I'm putting the 4 and the 3 together, and that's giving me 7x plus, and then I'm putting the 2 and the 12, the constants together, and they're making plus 14. And it's all over my 6. Sorry, I've put a minus in there for some reason. It's plus 14. And that is our answer. 7x plus 14 over 6. Coming over now to example 4, where we have the algebra on the bottom of the fraction as the denominator. Okay, so remember how we got our common denominator in the previous questions. We multiplied the two denominators. So our common denominator was you, when you multiply the bottoms together. Now, I'm just going to put these in a bracket here. You're allowed to put them in a bracket. So it's 5 minus x, and it's plus x plus 2. Now, the question didn't give the brackets, but you can bring them in if you want. So your common denominator is found when you multiply the two denominators by each other. 
Now what I'm going to do is, I'm not actually going to multiply them together. I'm just going to show that I'm multiplying them together. So I'm going to have the product of them, the multiplication. So it's 5 minus x times x plus 2. But I'm not actually going to multiply them out. I'm going to leave it like that. Look back in the other example here. Remember a common denominator was 6. That is the same as you going 3 multiplied by 2. You didn't have to make it 6. It's easy to make it 6 because you're talking with numbers. But it's the same as having 3 bracket 2. And that's what I'm doing here now in example 4. So that's my common denominator. Don't have to go multiplying them out. Next thing I'm going to do is write down my two fractions. So my two fractions are 6 over 5 minus x. And you might notice there that I've made my fraction line quite long because I'm going to fit in my common denominator there. Then I'm going to go plus my second fraction, which is 2 on the top, and it is x plus 2 on the bottom. So there's my two fractions written down again, and I've left that little bit of room on both of them. Next thing I do, I notice now, I need to make my common denominator 5 minus x, x plus 2. So what I'm doing here is I'm bringing in my common denominator now, which is 5 minus x, x plus 2. So I've just marked it in red. That's my common denominator. And the reason there that you'll notice it in red is because if you bring it into the bottom, you have to bring it into the top. So I'm multiplying basically the top and the bottom of my fraction by x plus 2. So I'm going to put an x plus 2 here as well. So that's what I'm bringing into the left fraction. If we come over to the right-hand side fraction, it's 2 over x plus 2. Don't forget your common denominator now is x plus 2, 5 minus x. So I'm bringing in that 5 minus x on the second fraction. So I need to bring it in on the top also, 5 minus x. Now, you'll notice there, it doesn't matter if you put the 5 minus x to the front of the fraction or to the rear. It doesn't matter. Now I just practice my skills of multiplication. I'm going to multiply in those top lines now. So I'm basically now going to multiply in the 6 into this bracket. So 6 by x and 6 by 2, which is giving me 6x plus 12 all over my common denominator, which is 5 minus x, x plus 2. So that's the first fraction. Next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring down my plus sign. So I'm adding my two fractions, and when I multiply the top of the second fraction, it's going to be 2 multiplied by 5 and 2 multiplied by minus x, which is giving me 10 minus 2x all over uh, my common denominator, which is x plus 2, 5 minus x. Again, it doesn't matter that the order of my common denominator is in a different way. Now I'm going to write it as a single fraction. So I'm putting the two denominators together, the tops of my fractions. So if I put the tops of my fractions together, it's going to be 6x plus 12 plus 10 minus 2x all over my common denominator, which is now 5 minus x, x plus 2. So again, you don't add the numbers on the bottom. Remember, look back on example 1, 2 or 3 for that. I'm then going to group common terms. So I have a 6x minus a 2x, which is giving me a 4x and I have a 12 plus a 10, which is a plus 22. So my answer is 4x plus 22 all over 5 minus x, x plus 2. And that's our final example, which is going through our algebra fractions where the algebra is on the denominator of the fraction.